Hello, everyone. Welcome to today's webinar. Sorry, we've been having a few technical difficulties, hence our delay by a few minutes, but we hope that uh, we are getting started here. And of course, I just had another issue pop up, so I apologize for all for this. My name is Joe Wires. I am from Ministry Training Source and along with the Association of Catholic Publishers, we are um, your host today for this webinar. Um, I apologize that let me get my backup system going here and we will get started. Uh, while I pull up a few things, um, let me, let's begin in our prayer. This prayer comes from uh, Kevin Holleran. And as we were talking about Instagram, thought we'd utilize a social media prayer. Father, Son, Holy Spirit, Amen. Most gracious Heavenly Father, thank you for the good gift of the internet and social media through which we can create, communicate, learn, and glorify you. I thank you for the ways you have blessed our world and made lives easier because of the internet. I praise you for giving the good gifts of creativity and work and that we can reflect your image online. We pray that the gospel message would speed ahead through the internet and social media, media, proclaiming the glories of Christ and reaching many in this generation with the saving message of our Lord Jesus. It's all in your name. Amen. Thank you for joining us today. As I said, my name is Joe Wires. I'm from Ministry Training Source. Uh, a few housekeeping details. Uh, as is customary, everyone is muted in here. Um, and so if you have a question, which we highly encourage, we ask that you please utilize your menu uh, on, on the, for the most part, it probably began on the right hand, right side of your screen. Um, ask a question or raise your hand. Um, you can also utilize the chat. In a few minutes, I will be turning off my webcam and giving the full control to Manya. Uh, and uh, as she leads us in the presentation, I will come back uh, as needed based on your questions or um, at the very end to help facilitate that final conversation. Uh, we do have a, a poll that we would like to begin with just to understand kind of where everyone is at with their understanding of Instagram. So if you could please fill out uh, or click the, the um, click your screen. Thank you. Give me about another five seconds. There we go. All right. So uh, we have Mania today. We have nobody says that they are a pro. 30% say that they're intermediate when it comes to Instagram, and 70% say they are just beginning. Um, with almost four four fifths or eighty percent of everyone um, who is here participating in that, so um, so you have that. With that, let me please introduce Manya Ionesco. She's the founder and president of Chicago digital marketing company um, Lightspan Digital. She's been dubbed a marketing scientist for her focus on analytics-driven marketing busting of digital marketing myths and bringing out the sexy even in brands that don't see themselves as such. A sought after speaker, she's been sharing knowledge as Kellogg executive education faculty and at high profile conferences around the country, such as Tech Week, SES, MPI TechCon, Conversion Conference, Content Jam, Marketing Profs University, HubCon, and many more. In 2014, Manya was awarded the Chicago Woman Making History Outstanding Entrepreneur Award by the City of Chicago Treasurer's Office. A true data nerd, Manya serves on the Masters in Analytics Advisory Committee at the Illinois Institute of Technology. Manya, thank you for joining us today. Thank you for having me. And hello, everyone. Um, I know I'm, we're the only ones who are not on mute but we did talk about starting with a few questions from you. I was trying to get a sense for what you may want to learn today um, because I wanna make sure that everybody walks away with at least one thing that you can apply right away. 
Um, also, forgive me, I have a bit of a cold, so my if my voice is annoying, I apologize for that. I will try to not uh, make any strange sounds here. So yeah, if we could collect a few questions, um, you can type them in the questions um, form in your GoToWebinar panels. And you'll see, you'll see Joe has typed in a question, so um, a little button there should light up for you so you can see where to find that at if you want to enter any questions. And um, of course, there's a lot of a lot of questions that I frequently get that I could I could predict what some of the things are. Um, but if you have any specific need, for example, that where you want some tips to walk away with today, um, let me know in that chat box. And while you do that, I'm going to pull up the presentation. Hope everyone is able to see this. We had a, a few minor technical issues here that I hope we resolved. So today's presentation was titled How to Grow Community on Instagram. And you know, community is this really wide term. It can mean a lot of things to a lot of different people. I want to show you today are some hacks, some tips, some ways to grow your audiences, get more engagement, um, put out there the stories that you want to tell, that you want your people to hear, um, and connect with, with your people in a meaningful, relevant way to you and to them. And ultimately, that's what community is, is where we come together in a fulfilling way um, or whatever your objectives are where they meet with with the needs of the people that you're serving you know that intersection of those usually leads to community um, community also involves conversation for many it means family it means friendship it means connection community often fulfills some some basic needs to be heard to be seen to be understood so in other words, community means we're working with people. And so the very first big thing that we want to look at is obviously understanding their needs. And the best way to do that is through conversation. So while I don't specifically have in this presentation something about that, um, I wanted to just start by saying that one of the biggest mistakes I see being made in social media is that we focus too much on posting and too little on talking to people. And talking doesn't necessarily mean one-on-one -on -one chat messages. It can mean that we ask questions and give people an opportunity to respond. It can mean that we pay attention, we, we do searches and see what our people are saying, and we're relevant, we participate in that conversation or we share their messages in a way of showing support. So what I want to encourage you to do when, when you think about growing your Instagram audiences, growing community, is to focus more on them, their needs, and what they are doing online or what they are looking for online. Because a lot of times their needs are hidden, right? They're not going to outwardly state them. And then give your people what they need and then leave it open for conversation. Again, questions is a great way to do that. Instagram stories has features in there where you can poll people, where you can ask them to ask you anything so that um, you can do somewhat of a chat where we don't ha you don't have to answer things in real time, but you can answer, select the questions that you know you can answer best and answer those for people. So do look into those features. Now, unfortunately, with doing a presentation like this on a desktop computer is that we don't really have the ability to 
uh, and Instagram is just almost purely a mobile app, we don't have the ability to really look at, uh, at our mobile interface. So a lot of these features are hard to see without some animation. And when we were testing this presentation earlier, the animations that I had in here wasn't, weren't quite working. Um, but I can guide you, and that's why I would love to see if you have any questions. Um, I can guide you on, um, on for you to access that. And in fact, I'm gonna pull up. Maria, while you pull that up, let me um, share with you a few of the questions that we have uh, received at this point. Okay. Uh, all right, so Sister Maria is asking, she'd like to learn more about using video in post and in stories, and also just more about stories, which she hasn't utilized at all yet. Okay. In that boat. So you've already mentioned stories. Um, so yeah, definitely focus on that, please. Uh, what is the breakdown of Instagram users by age? You know that. Uh, and then if you could talk about the differences between how to use Facebook versus Instagram and the advantages of using Instagram um, compared to the other social media channels. Great questions. Um, I'll start with the age one. And um, about 50% of users are under the age of 34. Um, so that still leaves such a big group of other ages. So. Um, Actually, I think the stat is more like 70% of users are in the age of 34. So, and then that, that number has changed rapidly because Instagram has become the number one social network in, in terms of engagement. I will show you in my presentation. Um, there are 500 million Instagram accounts active every day. The ad recall on Instagram is 2.8 times higher than other social networks. And, um, and Instagram has the highest engagement rates of all social networks right now. Um, and these numbers have just been growing. Any stats I give you right now may not be the same in a few months. Um, there's, we've seen this tidal shift from Facebook to Instagram as, as people have gotten disillusioned with Facebook or have felt um, that their privacy is not being respected, although ironically, Instagram is, is a Facebook company. Instagram is a, you know, is part of Facebook. So, um, so you will find quite a few people that you would not expect being on Instagram. Now, there's also a huge difference between active users, so people who actually post content or Insta stories, and people who just watch. What we're seeing with Instagram that there's huge volumes of just content consumers. People who log in and look at stories, look at Instagram posts, but never post themselves. And that's a very interesting element. It's very hard to do that on, on Facebook. People feel compelled to share information, although there's a lot of quiet people out there. Um, but on Instagram, we're seeing a lot of people just watching. So, so it's tricky because when we look at our Instagram statistics, we may not be seeing those people reflected in there. Um, and so it's important to know that there may be people looking at your accounts that you, you don't realize are there. Um, I've, I saw some other statistics the other day of how many people actually look at accounts without following those accounts. And this is a trend we see throughout social media, maybe with, with Facebook's exception, um, that you, don't, you no longer need to follow an account to get the content that you want. Because we use a search so much on these social networks um, that we can just do a search and access information that we want. So, and that's a thing that we, we haven't seen so much, um, that we haven't seen so much on um on facebook but we're seeing it on instagram quite a bit so um joe can you give me a search term that may be relevant to your community and let's quickly take a look at what we find here um young catholic audience um, we'll go with young catholics there you go <laughs> Okay, so it looks like there's a hashtag that's being used. It's showing us 2,971 posts. 
Um, when we look in here, you, we also see related hashtags right under there. So Instagram is making it very easy for us to, um, to find associated conversations, to also in, copy these hashtags and use them in our own content. Um, if we were to drill down into one of these accounts, well, going back to Instagram stories, you cannot post stories from desktop, unfortunately, um, but you can watch them. So you can see what this person has been sharing. Um, she was tagged in a post by somebody else, so she reshared it. We see a lot of this, a lot of the text over on stories. Sometimes it doesn't look very pretty, um, but many users are packing hashtag emojis, tagging other people in their stories. Um, and, and I want to encourage you to do the same. But a great way to learn about how to engage with your audience is to, to do a search like that, just what we did, did here, and then take a look at what others are doing. This person has quite a few followers, so um, so whatever it is that she's doing is working really well. And then we can try to emulate what we see here. One other thing that you can do with stories is to invite one of these influencers to take over your Instagram account for a day um, and to give your audiences a sneak preview into their Catholic life. Um, there's a lot of those exchanges that, that you're going to see on Instagram. So I want to encourage you to reach out to some, some of your community members and see if they would be interested in something like that. That's one of the quickest ways to grow your audiences because frequently, you know, they're going to announce on their Instagram account that they're doing this. So their followers are going to come over and follow you. Um, and, and the more exchanges like that you do, um, the more your accounts are going to grow, but also it's a, it's a much easier way to create content is to let your community members create the content for you because none of us have unlimited resources. And as we go into this presentation, you're gonna see that it takes a lot of work to sustain accounts like this. And this is not new. Um, back in the day when Twitter was, was a lot more popular, I would do these presentations and people would, their minds would be blown because they, really realize how much work it takes even just to grow a Twitter account and the same with Facebook accounts. Now it's actually even harder with Facebook. Um, and here it's a bit harder even because it's a visual channel. And so on top of every all the other um, techniques that you want to use here, you also need good photography. So, so Instagram will take a bit of work. Now when you first get started, you, you're going to want to create your bio, right, that you have here. Um, this is very, this is quite well done. We see a lot of emojis in bios these days. Oftentimes we see the emoji at the front of the bio, almost like a bullet point. Um, we're going to see the bios a lot organized like this with lines, with line breaks in between them. Um, often we see a hashtag in there. And then we'll see a link to a website. Usually, um, most users will have just one link. Recently, there's been these platforms that have popped up. She's using Linktree. I also use Linktree. And what Linktree does is that it allows you to create a landing page where you have links to other to a number of things that you want shared. So instead of sending them straight to your website and then they have to figure out on their own where to go, you can use Linktree to organize some of the links that are most, most relevant recently. So for example, a podcast um, and, and or you know, articles, um, you can include in here your, your YouTube account and so on. Um, also on Instagram, you're gonna see posts that say link in bio. If you use a tool like this, um, you can point from different posts to different links that are gonna sit on this landing page. So you don't limit yourself always to just one link to sending them to just one place. 
Yeah, I'm going to go back into the presentation. Um, if this platform allows me. Joe, was there a question that I missed? I feel like uh, there were three and I missed one of them. <laughs> I think uh, probably just the big one or the other one would be explaining a little bit more detail the difference between Facebook and Instagram and why to use Instagram over Facebook or other other uh, mediums. Yeah, well, Instagram, is the, you, you want to use Instagram more these days because that's where the people have migrated to. And because a lot more content consumption is happening now on Instagram. Uh, Facebook is making changes all the time. They're pushing forth now um, the video side of things on Facebook. Um, th they're pushing forth communities which you don't have on Instagram. At the same time, communities are private, so there's not as much you can do there. Um, uh, you can only communicate with the people who have joined your community. So, so those are some of the biggest differences right now. I'm not saying don't use Facebook. What we are seeing, though, is that Instagram continues to grow. Facebook is not growing that much. Um, and we're seeing a lot more interaction on Instagram now that we're seeing on Facebook when it comes to business accounts and individuals. So between business accounts and individuals, we're seeing a lot more activity on Instagram. I will also show you, I can also show you some numbers that show even on the advertising side. Actually, if I don't have it in this presentation, I had it in the one that I gave to your community last month at the annual meeting, I believe it was called. Um, when it comes to advertising, we are seeing much more conversions coming from Instagram at a much higher click to conversion rate and um, um, uh, than on Facebook. So we it's it's very all the numbers are showing us that people are more tuned in on Instagram, which means that they will remember you more uh, as the stats shows. 2.8 times higher ad recall. Um, so that's why we favor Instagram now. And it hasn't even been a big discussion with our clients anymore. The space where it's been still difficult is trying to understand how you use it for B2B, business to business marketing. Um, and there are ways to do that. There's a blog post on our website where I cover all these points that I have here plus some. And if you're interested in the B2B side of things, there's a section in there. Um, about that. Some of the things that we're going to go into today, um, we're going to talk a lot about hashtags. Hashtags is a thing, a question that I get a lot. Um, we're going to talk about um, how to tap into the Instagram algorithm to get more visibility for your posts, how to use some tricks to use stories, um, other strategies for how to get people to watch your content and all sorts of tips. So you will get this presentation um, and here's a long list of things that you can do and let's get into more detail around what's possible here. So um, this is a hashtag stories hack. So we don't want to load our stories with a hundred hashtags. At the same time, we want our stories to be found in search. So a trick that we use is to plug in a lot of hashtags, but then we hide them. And so if you can see this animation on my screen, what we do is we plug in the hashtag, then we use the picker tool. Um, so at, on, on the upper right hand corner and you'll get the presentation so you can see it in more detail. Um, there's, there's a little pencil tool that allows you to pick a color and you pick a color of an object on the screen. So the text turns that color and then you pinch it down with two fingers, so you, you make it smaller and then um, hide it within that object, the color of which you made the, your text be like now. So this allows you to keep the display clean, include a lot of hashtags so that you get found easier um, and not make it look like you're including that many hashtags. Another way to include a lot of hashtags is Instagram has a limit of 30 hashtags, but what we can do, we can also include hashtags in comments. So in your own comments. 
So you can put hashtags at the end of your post and then you can put more hashtags in the comments. And now, as I showed you earlier, there's so many ways to find hashtags and itself will feed you created hashtags. So all you have to do is just do some searches and I'll also show you some tools in a little bit. Other, other ways to play into Instagram's algorithm. So every social network now rewards specific types of content, content that they deem the most interesting. So they, they use formulae to decide what things you're gonna see when you log into your account, which are the first posts that you're gonna see, which are the first stories that you're gonna see. Um, Instagram doesn't really tell us what the algorithm is. So a lot of people who do a lot of testing have, have hypothesized there's certain signals. Instagram did talk about their signals and again, at the end of this, I could share a link to the blog post where we go into more detail about this. Uh, but one of the signals is saving to collections. Other signals are the number of likes, the number of comments within a specific period of time. So if you get a higher volume of likes and comments within the first time period, we don't know what it is because Instagram's not telling us, but if we if you can push an increase on those signals in the, in the first time period that the post is being published, um, then it deems that it's important and it's going to push it at the top of your of, of your friends, of your followers' feeds, or even in search. So saving something to a collection is something that seems, that makes that post seem more important, more relevant. So the way we trick the system is that we save it to our own collection first. Um, I can't tell who else has saved it or how many times. There, there's some stats there that we can look at. Um, but, but first we can save it to our own and try to boost up that signal. Adding emojis to the profile, I showed that example earlier. Um, it looks like it can lead to a lot more interactions and more than 60% of Instagram accounts now use emojis, so you should too. Um, again, since Instagram is only used for mobile, it should make it a little bit easier to plug in emojis. Using stories versus feed posts. This is a big question we get, which is better? Ideally, you have a mix of both. Well, but what we are seeing is that stories lead to more engagement, feed posts lead to more conversions, with a caveat, um, stories, um, seem to lead to more conversions in ads recently. So a shift has happened there. Um, also, if you have over 10,000 followers, you can post a link within stories, which the average Joes like us can't. <laughs> if you have a lot of followers, you can post links in stories, which you can't still do in post in the posts themselves. So technically that should increase conversion rates or click throughs to your website or wherever you want to send them an event or um, a book and so on. So we are seeing stories effectiveness being on the rise, but we still want a mix of both. But a trick you can use is to share your post to stories. And so then you cross the two methods. And I'll show you an example in a little bit. Now for hashtags, I know I said you can use 60 hashtags, max them out, um, but that doesn't mean that we should use any hashtags. So a lot of people want to go for the top most popular hashtags, you know, go to a website, all your Google, what are the top hashtags? And this website will tell you, here's the top hashtags, most used hashtags right now. Um, that doesn't mean that we should just pick the ones at the top because if they're being used millions of times, your post is just gonna lo get lost in that you know, mass volume of hashtag users. So um, we need to find the right ones that are not being used too much, but are used enough to where enough people follow them. So there are many tools out there that can help you. One of them is called Hashtagify. Um, there's also a hashtag expert, but also when you start typing a hashtag in the search bar on Instagram, you're going to see suggestions. When you do a search, like I showed you, you're going to see suggestions. If you go to 
um, to the posts of others that are within your community, you're going to see more hashtags. So what we like to do is take a collection of all those hashtags and put them in just like a notepad or a Word document, you know, clean out the duplicates. And then you have a nice selection of potential hashtags. Sometimes we also organize them by category. So we do that in pre-planning. You know, when we when we plan our strategies, when we plan our tactics, um, we do that hashtag research. We organize them by topic. We have long lists, and then when we create our content, we just copy and paste from there. But there may be new hashtags popping up all the time. Um, apparently, branded hashtags are on the rise. So in some cases, let's say that maybe you want to tap into the audiences of, of a particular church, a particular book publisher, a particular author. You may want to look for those branded hashtags as well um, and, and plug them in where appropriate. We don't want to randomly plug hashtags into that are unrelated into content, uh, but where appropriate, appropriate, you can use those as well. You can also go to people's, um, your community members, or those that you want to reach that maybe are not connected to yet. You can search for them um, and then go to their profiles and you can see there what hashtags they're following. So you can pick hashtags from there as well. Unfortunately, there is no shortcut to this. There is no tool that will magically tell you what to use. Um, you will have to do the research. That little search bar is incredibly useful and it's being underutilized. It's being underutilized by brands, by businesses, by our organizations. Everyday users use them a lot, which it, which it gives us an advantage uh, because if we plug in the right content, the right keywords, the right hashtags, we're gonna be found. Uh, but in order to get to the point where we know what to use, we have to do our research. So use that search bar, it's incredibly useful. Um, here's, here's another tip. Um, this comes from an influencer, Jen B, and she's also a friend of mine um, and, and an amazing hairstylist and makeup artist. And she recommends that after posting a photo with a specific hashtag, then you click on the hashtag that you just used and like about five photos that come up. But only photos of accounts that are smaller, that don't have a huge following, that seem genuine and authentic in their content. Um, and the way, the reason why you want to do this is because if they use the same hashtag, that means that they're interested in the same topics. If they're smaller accounts, that means they're not getting that many likes and they're gonna notice who liked their content. And you do that a number of times and, and you follow them, they may follow you back. Big question that I get a lot about following is how to get more followers. The best way to get more followers, the quickest way is to follow people. A percentage of them will follow you back, especially if you engage with their content and over time your account grows. If you don't want to look like you follow too many people and you have a small following, then over time you may want to unfollow some of those who don't follow you back. There's all sorts of apps in the App Store that allow you to look at your followers and unfollowers if you want to take action on that. The big shift offs also on Instagram has been that brands and companies and organizations are starting to use long caption formats. Um, if, you, if you go to National Geographic, just as an example, and click on their captions, they are huge. They are basically plugging articles into the Instagram posts themselves. Now, a lot of Instagram experts will tell you to keep your captions short. There were some articles out there that were saying caption should be shorter than on Facebook. And I strongly disagree with this. First, all those words that you can be found through. People are spending a lot of time on Instagram, on average of 30 minutes a day. So they're reading stuff. If your stuff is interesting, they are gonna read through it. Um, also, now there are ways to format that content so that you have line breaks, and, and so it is easier to read. So, um, and, and Instagram shortens that caption. So if those who are not interested, it's not like you're filling their page with, their, with, with your story. 
Um, but it makes it more important that that first sentence that you have in there is catchy. It pulls them in, makes them want to read the rest of that caption. Another way to attract people is to show the creative process, your process, the behind the scenes, the, the reason for your being, your, your, your big why. Um, if you look at my friend Marta, um, her Instagram account is uh, at practice underscore studies. She travels the world. She, she goes on Instagram and finds different interesting makers. So artists who make things with their hands and reaches out to them on Instagram. So she knows she'll be traveling somewhere. Um, she reaches out to them on Instagram and says, you know, I would love to come document your process. I'm a photographer. I'm not getting in your way. Um, and then she goes, connects with these artists and then shows their process, shows um, the beauty behind their art in a way that nobody else does and puts all of this on Instagram. Of course, she also has a website. And it's in incredibly appealing um, to, to be able to see behind the scenes. I mentioned this earlier. Another thing you can do is to share your own posts to your stories. So um, you can see here, and again, when you get this presentation, you'll be able to zoom in and see it a little bit more clear. But you, you have the share button even on your own posts, not just on other people's posts. It's right under the image, the third icon to the right, and you tap on that and it adds, allows you to add it to your own story. Now, don't train your audiences to only look at your stories. <laughs> so at times, you know, you want to point them back to your, to your post. What I frequently do is on stories before I publish this reshared post to my stories, um, I pulled, I, I open from the top the stickers option and I look for a GIF that shows tap, tap on or tap here. Um, and I overlay it onto the story before I, before I share it. I put it in the middle of the image that shows the post that I just reshared. Um, and that adds a little bit of an animation that draws people's eye to it because from a story, you can go to a post by just tapping on that shared post. So again, I share my post to my stories. I overlay a, a GIF that says tap here so that once I share it and they look at it, they can tap and go back to my post. So I want the two to be connected. I want people to go to my posts and I also want them to watch the stories. If you share others posts to your story, let them know or at tag them, add their at name onto that post um, because Instagram doesn't notify them. So you want to make sure that they know and they see that you share them. You want to get their attention. If you just reshare their content without mentioning them in that reshare, they may not know. Um, so make sure you let them know. You can also give a sneak preview through a story reveal. I will again link to the article on our website where you can actually see a video of how this is done. Uh, but you, there's five steps here. When you get the presentation, you can go through them. It's going to be a little hard to explain in this medium, but it has to do with the pen icon. Um, and this clearly walks you step by step and you'll see how to do it. Um, and this adds a little, a little fun, a little uh, intrigue to your content. It's going to make it different. It's going to stand out. They're going to remember you and then they're going to think, oh, wow, I want to follow this account because they do cool things and it's going to be fun to follow them. It's going to be interesting to follow them. Always tag your posts with the location um, because they receive 79% higher engagement. It doesn't have to be the same location. In fact, if you want to reach multiple audiences, switch up the locations. Now, don't lie about it. So, <laughs> so you're going to have to think strategically and plan this out um, that if you may be at a coffee shop, you can take a photo and use that as the background for an inspirational moment for a post that you're going to do the next week. And you can tag that location where you were in, in your post. You can tag the location later. It doesn't have to be real time. 
Um, so play with it a little bit. But that way, again, you, you can show up and search for certain locations and you may reach new people. When you work with influencers, so I mentioned earlier at the beginning of this, I mentioned that there may be people in your community that you could work with where they could do, they could take over your Instagram for a day um, or, or share content, create content for you and you create content for them. You exchange content or you collaborate on content. When, when you choose those influencers, you want to go about it smartly. When you get this presentation, you'll clearly see the, this checklist, but you want people with high quality photography, with high engagement rate. So what is the ratio of likes and comments per followers? Um, their fan base should align with your target customer. And this gets tricky sometimes. We've seen influencers who just sell their souls and they have content on so many different topics or every other post is a sponsored post. That is probably not going to be a good fit. You want to go with somebody who's genuine, who is truly aligned with you on interests and, and fan base. Other ways to get more followers is through strategic interactions. So find accounts that have a following that's similar to the following you would like. Turn on post notifications for some of these accounts and do them in, in stages. So five at a time, you work with those for a while, then turn those off, do five other. And then as soon as they post, when you see the notification, of course, you may not be on, on it 24 seven, but when you'll see a notification in, in and post as quickly as you can, leave a comment as quickly as you can on that post so that you get their attention before everyone else. You're going to see that the earlier the comments are, um, the, 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 higher the, uh, the higher the probability that they're going to be re replied to. So they've seen, they've seen you, they're engaging with you now. Also, follow their real followers. So look at who's following them. And if, if these folks seem like they could be um, a great addition to your community and follow their followers. And then um, periodically switch those up. So you started with five, after a month, pick five more and so on. Like I said earlier, to build communities on Instagram, to be really effective on Instagram, it takes a lot of work. And there, there are no shortcuts. I'm giving you a lot of tips. You're going to have the presentation. You're going to have the opportunity to take, to try, let's say, one, two, three this month and another three next month. Ultimately, you're not going to know what's going to work for you and specifically for your topic, for your audience, until you test out some things. Don't let them overwhelm you. Do a little bit at a time. You're never going to have all day, so just do as much as you can. But if you want to be like those big influencers, um, it takes a lot of time. And it's okay if you can't do all of this. Another method um, is to use the tagging friend method. So once in a while, create posts that invite your followers to tag other people. So tag someone who inspires you. Tag someone who was a good friend to you this week. Um, Tag someone you usually go to for spiritual advice. Although I, I will warn you, if you go with spiritual advice, that's a little too broad. So narrow it down a little bit. Maybe it's something that's um, relevant to that time or that season and so on. But encourage people. And this is how also you encourage conversation. This is how this is community really is, as I said earlier. Use a tag a friend to win something but do it wisely. Um, we're not seeing tremendous success with these types of campaigns. I mean, giveaways can be a great way to grow the follower count, but we also lose a lot of the followers very fast after that. So there's a lot of people out there that will do this type of following just to win something, and then they unfollow you. Um, at times, it's worthwhile doing it. Just, just be smart about it. And if you're going to do it, don't put in a tremendous effort to make it happen. We have seen businesses that will spend months planning a campaign like this and then maybe get 100 followers. So just be careful to, to, to not invest that much into something that may be not huge. If 
if at the first try it works well, then great. Then you can put more thought and, and make it bigger. But start with something simple and see, see where it takes you. Um, to make your bios and captions, I mentioned now that the captions can be very long. Um, if you make want to make them easier to read, insert line breaks. And there's ways to do that. You can compose your message in a Facebook post and then copy and paste it to Instagram um, and format it on Facebook because Facebook does allow you to do that. Or you can do it in a notepad application, or you can use a scheduling tool, tools like Latergram, Hootsuite, BufferUp, allow you to format your posts. Or you can use a tool, it's going to be hard to read this, uh, but I'm, I'm plugging it in here as a URL. When you get this, you can, you can use that as well. By the way, this is my, my grandmother here in this photo. She was so beautiful. So I, I wrote a post about her. And when you write something more sentimental like that, you want the caption to be a little longer to, to do her memory justice. So um, I had to use something to format the post. Another way to be found, and this is, you, it's not as commonly known, is that Instagram now has the ability to, to, for you to insert alternative text to images. So alternative text, for those of you who know about how the web is built, is a way to indicate to search engines what the photo is about, because we still don't have the ability to really, uh, for, for search engines to really interpret photos, to really read what's inside the photo. So we can add these, um, this copy behind, imagine it behind the photo for search engines to identify what's in there. Um, it'll be hard for you to see this. And again, it's it's got like a few steps to go through. So when you get this presentation, you can take a look at how to do it. Um, but it, it's within the advanced settings of a post. Um, you can write alternative text and then it'll be saved. It's not going to be visible. But when people search for something, your photo will be included in that um, in that search. Another thing to do is to help others out and you may get a mention like this one. So I asked my Instagram followers for Instagram hacks and tips as, as we were writing this content that also we turned into this presentation. Um, and so somebody gave a tip. The tip was reply to questions like these just in case they decide to mention me in their video or blog. And we mentioned him. Um, so, and not only that he got a mention on the blog and in this presentation, um, but I also reposted his answer with my, with a funny picture of my boy cat who has a predilection to sit like a human. Last but not least, we need to look at the data. Um, you can use an analytics tool to help you with deeper, deeper insights. If your account is used for business purposes, um, do set it up as a business account, which gives you insights, it gives you analytics um, at an aggregate level, but also by post, by story. Um, unfortunately, if you do use the native Instagram analytics, you're gonna have to take the data out periodically and record it manually, um, because for some of the content, it won't show you historical data, like stories in particular. Um, so, so you're going to want to track that data, export that data manually, export it into something else. But there's some other tools to look into. Square Loving's Instagram Insights. I mean, you can see an image here on the right. So you can see best time to post. That's a big question that we get. Um, I don't know that I'm, I'm a believer in using data like this to determine when you should post, uh, rather taking data from somebody else. You need to look at your own data to see when your audiences are engaging with you the most. So there's a lot of articles being written about best times to post. Most of those are based on when people use Instagram the most. That doesn't mean that your audience is due at the same time. Also, if you post when everybody else is posting, it's once again gonna be harder to break through that clutter, break through that noise. So you really wanna do that. Um, you can see interactions by daytime for the for the last 90 days. So um, so here you can see by day of the week, but also by 
the, the time of the day. There's union metrics, there's Icono Square, there's Crowdfire, um, but also social media management platforms, so platforms that allow you to uh, post content, schedule content such as Sprout Social and Hootsuite also will give you um, insights, will give you statistics that you can use um, to inform your marketing. So in conclusion, after in 2018, Instagram hit billion users. Um, it's become the most powerful social network that we have today. Um, so use these tips to move into 2020. Remember that it changes, Instagram changes all the time. Um, we watch the Facebook blog um, and other um, social media news sources to be notified when they make changes to the platform. Just last week, I believe Instagram announced yet another Instagram app. So, so they're constantly launching new things and trying new things. Um, just like everything, it will take time and it will take focus, intention. Um, there's no quick way to get to where you want to go. Um, but I hope that at least a few of these tips will be useful for you to grow your community in the year to come. And um, if you need to reach me, I'm on. I'm at Manamika on pretty much all social networks, including Snapchat. <laughs> um, or you can email me, it's mana at lightspandigital.com, and I'm always happy to share tips with you. Or if you go to our website at lightspandigital.com, you can subscribe to our newsletter and we're, through which we announce when new blog posts are up. And you can go to our blog and see what else we've written about Instagram or other social networks. This concludes my presentation. Well, thank you, Mana. Um, very informative and uh as a social media user myself i greatly appreciate it um so if you have any other questions please make sure you type them in um because we're going to be concluding here very shortly we did have a question from axel about uh getting the presentation that has been uploaded to uh the webinar if you look on the menu you should see a category that says handouts um, if you go to handouts, uh, there should be a link that says Instagram tips 2019-20, and that's the link to the PowerPoint um, presentation for Mana, and you can click on it to download that um, automatically. Also, did anybody notice my my little co-presenter here in the corner? <laughs> no, I, I don't. I think your name plate actually blocks it. The, the... Oh, okay. My yeah. kitty cat is sitting right next to me and looking at the screen. So she's uh, she decided to join. Um, there you go. All right. Try I am not over. able to, uh, to access the questions. So if there are any other, you could yeah, please. I'm, I'm looking at it. it. Seemed like they all came through very quickly um, at the beginning. So I'm just waiting and looking through our chat. Also, no. Well, in the meantime, uh, let me do a couple other housekeeping things. Uh, on behalf of the Association of Catholic Publishers, we thank you for joining us today. Um, our next webinar will be January 7th. So uh, at the same time, so we hope that you'll be able to join us on that day um, when we are in 2020, um, the year 2020 already. Since there does not appear to be any any additional questions, uh, Mana, anything else that you have for us? Yes, I would love to share the, um, I will, in the chat box, I will be sharing a link to the blog post that I mentioned. Um, it's, it looks like it just went to you, Joe. So if you would like to share that with the rest of the attendees, I would greatly appreciate it. All right, there we go. Uh, you may have to copy and paste that into your web browser. Um, oh, we did get a question that just popped through. Are there other sources for learning more of the basics to using Instagram? Well, the best way to learn is to just 
set up account, an account and poke around um, and try the different features. I love to go to YouTube for all sorts of tutorials, especially the more basic ones. Um, you can find quick, easy ones there. Um, there's, you know, there's, I mean, a Google search will pop up a lot of things, but I would just go to YouTube to find um, simple ways to use Instagram. But just playing with it. When you first set up an account, you don't have any followers, um, so you're not risking anything. Um, you can just, you know, set up a test account and then tap on the different features. You're not going to break anything. But the, that's the best way to learn always is by doing, uh, which is why I included so many step by steps in the presentation. And I want you to look at it on your own so that you can have your phones in front of you and actually um, follow the steps off of the presentation. Great. Bonnie, you said that there was a new app that was just released uh, last week. What what is that app or what does that do? <laughs> It is so one of the one of the big trends that we we noticed in the past year is that um, peer to peer communication or peer to group communication has been on the rise. Um, so um, so we're seeing all social networks facilitate closer friends communication. So the new app is called Threads. It's a close, it's truly being described as a close friends chat app with auto status updates. Um, so it's just another way of facilitating sharing content and having conversations with your closest contacts on a particular social network. Um, yeah. <laughs> All right. You Instagram tests a lot, of, a lot of new apps all the time and sometimes kills them after a while. Um, they all they test a lot of things. So some a lot of a lot of features that Instagram has may not be even available in a region or um, in a part of the world. They may be tested somewhere in Asia, for example, but not in the US. In Canada, for example, they have been testing hiding the number of likes, the number of hearts on a post. Um, and so that's been available there to a set of users, but not anywhere in the US. So they're always testing different things. Um, if you read blogs, industry blogs, or, or even the Facebook and so blogs themselves, you find about these tests. So I wouldn't take the launch of this app as something permanent. We never know. Uh, you're explaining it, and it reminded me of the days of AOL Instant Messenger with my friends and chatting that way and everything like that. So, well, uh, thank you, Mana and Lights uh, LightspanDigital.com to go visit her and her website. Um, as I said, our next presentation, our next webinar, will be January 7th. On behalf of the Association of Chemical Publishers, we do thank you for joining us. This webinar has been recorded and will be available for you um, very shortly after this concludes, as well as an evaluation once it ends. So please do fill out the evaluation as we do uh, read over those and appreciate all the feedback we receive. We wish you a great day. Thank you and God bless and see you January 7th. Bye.